How's it going everybody? Welcome back to a, another tutorial for AE Tuts with Ryan. Today we're going to be looking at just Adobe After Effects, opening it for the first time and how to actually operate and get familiar with everything so you actually know what you're doing inside the program. I know I have done tutorials past such as teleportation, super speed, flight, muzzle flashes, really simple tutorials, but they might not be simple if you really don't know the program. So I'm going to teach you how to do that in this first one where we're just going to be getting a look at um, the program itself and getting familiar with things so we can know how to edit in the future. So first step, go ahead and open After Effects. Here we are. And immediately you see you've got just a bunch of stuff that you might not be familiar with. And that's the purpose of these. I'm just going to break down some stuff in this first tutorial so you know um, what windows and what panels are showing and what they mean. So the great thing about this is everything you see here, this is called your workspace. And up here we've got different workspaces, um, default, review, learn, small screen, all these stuff. And then the cool thing is you can actually customize it and save workspaces. If you go here, you can uh, save changes to this workspace or save as a new one. So I've got mine here. I'm going to go back to the default one just to show you um, what you're working with. So up here at the top, we've got the toolbar and there's a bunch of tools you can work out here. Um, the main one you're going to be using about, you know, uh, 85, 90% of the time is the selection tool. Easy way to get that is with the V button on the keyboard. And that's how you're just going to select stuff, edit stuff, drag, uh, drop, whatever. Uh, next one's the hand tool, and this is just for uh, moving around the composition. This is basically what a composition is going to look like, and what the hand cool tool can do is just drag around. So when you zoom in, you can drag and, you know, easily manipulate to pull, if that's even a word. Next one is uh, magnify or the zoom tool. And this is just used to zoom in, zoom out. But an easier way to do that is just, just down here, you can see these percentages and you can fit the screen, which is that's what it's at right now. Or you can zoom in or zoom out. And then an easy way to actually get back to fitting the screen is pressing, pressing a alt slash and that'll do it or option on a Windows. But next one, we've got all our camera um, orbiting options. So this is the orbit tool and this will orbit around your object or set of objects, whether you're working with a one or two way node camera. And we'll get into that later when we get into 3D space, but those can edit in 3D space. Uh, rotate tool is just rotating things, objects. And then you got your pan behind tool and that's for you can move anchor points or adjust pivot options, things like that. A uh, rectangle tool, you can create shapes, you know, whatever they want to be. Or you can uh, hold on this option and you can have your rounded rectangle, which is rounded corners. Or uh, circles or polygons or stars, you can really make any shape you'd like. The pen tool is used for creating shapes as well. You can see down here, shape layer. Or if you have a shape layer or any layer of that choice, you can actually uh, create a mask and that will just show what's inside of that region and we'll get into masking later as well. Uh, next we've got our text tool. You can use this to add any sort of text and you can see that it's black so you actually can't see it but there we go, text. And there's a bunch of options in here too like scaling it up and down, adjusting the leading kerning or tracking, you know, any of that stuff, making it bold, italic, uh, subscript, superscript, whatever it might be. So next we've got our brush tool that's used for either drawing itself or honestly I haven't ever really needed to touch the brush tool or use the brush tool at all. Clone stamp that's used for um, content aware fill, um, matching backgrounds, adjusting backgrounds or foregrounds and we'll get into that later tool too. Eraser is just uh, exactly what it might sound like believe it or not. Uh, the Roto Brush tool, this is a very, very handy option, and we will definitely be getting into that as well later. But that is used for, it's it's more like a um, more professional, more um, correct mask, you know. Instead of masking an object, you could just draw around the object, and the Roto Brush will do the work for you. The Puppet Pin tool, you can create puppet points to um, manipulate. If I just make it solid, you can create puppet points to manipulate the object and I'll change this color for you just so you can see it a little better to uh, manipulate the objects so you can move it around and you know just do what you will you know for my tutorials when I take a mask of a person or something like that I will use the puppet pin tool to um, manipulate their body to make the physics look more believable so that's really it for the toolbar 
Um, next we've got our project itself, this project window. And you can see I've already created stuff just to show you, but I'm going to delete that. And so what you can do in this project window is you got uh, a couple useful buttons down here. One is the create a new composition. I'm in a different window, so it's all scattered. And composition settings are uh, key to when you're importing footage or adjusting things. And we're going to get into that in the next tutorial here pretty soon. But um, you can create compositions in here. And once you create uh, compositions or add objects or things like that, you can create folders. And uh, you can, obviously, I just named it folder, obviously. You can uh, add anything into that folder and rename it. It's like compositions or comps, you know. And they'll all be there. Um, if you don't want something, you can delete it, and it's gone from your project. Just be careful about that, because if you delete a if you delete an asset in your project window, it's uh, going to be gone in your timeline or in your project forever. So just be careful about that. Unless, of course, where which you should have it stored on your computer somewhere. Uh, next, we've got our color channels, and this matches color depth, and this window's right here. And what this does is it, it, it measures the color depth of the project or the video or the asset that you're working with to um, change lighting and change uh, vibrance or illumination itself. And that's something we can get into later. Next thing we've got is the timeline. And this is where if I just create some stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a new composition. I'm going to call it main tut comp. Tut, of course, is in tutorial. I'm going to come up to layer new solid. And we've got a new solid here. We'll just call it BG for background. So say we've got a red background and we've got another solid that's maybe blue in some way. And we're going to move this. So we're going to get in the timeline in the next tutorial. But uh, what you can do is you can manipulate the duration of certain things. And when you play it back, you know, it'll show up for a certain amount of time. Or you can adjust them or move them or cut them. And... Um, that's really, it's really your uh, your main ingredient when you're creating any kind of project. Um, this is where all your assets lie when you are, after you import them. Um, you can obviously have multiple compositions. You know, if I create one and I want the red solid in one and just the blue solid in the other one, you know, you have two compositions there and that's good for um, when you're editing multiple things at once and you want to maybe pre-render them from another one and then once they're rendered, pop them into the other composition or just drag the actual composition you can see here and what you can do is other things like pre-compose them and now it's one big composition which you can see here but we're not going to be doing that right now because it's a lot um, effects you can do say I have a certain animation where maybe the uh, the solid will move from this part of the screen over to this part of the screen over a certain amount of time maybe a little quicker just in this case so you can see there it's really, really rigid and static and what this little button does right here is it uh, adds motion blur. So you can see now based on those feathered edges right there that um, it adds a little more variety to it. It makes it more believable to the eye that something is actually moving across the screen and that's really uh, helpful with visual effects and things like that in videos. Other things we have are um, the adjustment layer button. You can turn this layer into an adjustment layer and it will automatically become invisible, but any effects that you apply onto it will be visible on every single underlying layer of that layer. And we'll get into that later as well. Uh, the 3D button uh, obviously turns it into a 3D layer, so you can move it in 3D space. And uh, that might affect your rendering time based on you know the amount of 3D work you're doing, but it is very cool when doing motion graphics or anything else like that. Uh, your blending modes are really helpful. Um, you know, any of the any of these groupings can just change the um, the transparency values or the opacity in any way, just to uh, maybe add different color depth or tints or tones that um, you couldn't do in any other other thing unless you had an insane amount of um, presets and a visual effect. So uh, transparency and track mats. You know, if it's transparent, it's just a transparent layer, and you can see there. You know, it's gone. Um, a track mat is basically if you have a layer on top of or under another layer you can set the track mat to an alpha, alpha inverted, luma, or luma inverted mat and that is basically going to uh, take the form of one of the other layers and we can get into that later as well. It's a whole it's a whole thing I keep saying that but you know trust me you know after you really learn all this which is gonna take time and it's gonna you're gonna get used to it eventually you know you'll you'll be able to just click click all around the screen knowing exactly what you're doing 
So we got the parent taking the pick whip and the pick whip, uh, which is just the same thing as the parent. This is more, you know, digital, or this is more like for like left brain people. This is more for like right brain people, but I use both because why not? Um, it just allows you to um, match any of the values, whether it's in the transform options or the effect controls to um, match one layer to another based on the effect or the transform. Uh, next thing we have is the composition, the footage, and the layer monitors. The composition is basically the equivalent to your program monitor in Adobe Premiere, if you know anything about that. And it just shows you what is going on inside the uh, composition you're working with right here. The footage layer is like the source monitor in Premiere, which is you can just take an asset. I'll just import something super quickly here. I'll just take this in and, you know, if I wanted to edit this before I dropped it into my timeline, I'd double click it in my project window and I could add an in point here and an out point there and then I'd drop it in and only that certain amount of time plays. So that's super useful when you're wanting to uh, trim or make subclips of one piece of footage. Uh, your layer uh, monitor is basically the exact same as your footage, but it just works with solids and, asset and uh, images and vectors and things like that. But both the footage and layer monitors can also utilize specific tools from the toolbar, such as the Rotobrush Puppet or Clone Stamp tools, and those are super essential for rotoscoping or manipulating certain assets. Uh, your effect controls, or your effects and presets, excuse me, are over here, and right here you've just got a bunch of built-in effects and presets that you can add to text or images or any kind of vector or Photoshop or Cinema 4D or any of the third party layers. You can also do it just with regular compositions, footage, solids, pieces of things like that. And um, you can have your own custom presets which you can create yourself or you can have any sort of animation preset so anything that moves across the screen uh, like a position, a rotation, a scale, a opacity, um, any mask properties, you know, those those can affect those in certain ways. And then you have your third-party plugins, which I don't know if you've heard of the company Video Copilot, but they create a lot of um, very, very useful plugins and presets that you can use for After Effects. And some are free, but some are paid, but the paid ones are well worth it. Um, Element 3D, if you've heard of that, there's Optical Flares. The uh, Saber plugin, which is just a free uh, lightsaber plugin where you just can um, keyframe the points of where your lightsaber will be. You can also attach it to masks or pieces of text. And then the Color Vibrance plugin, plugin excuse me, is just kind of like the tin plugin, but there's a lot more values you can manipulate to actually get the color you really want. The Effect Controls panel, which is going to be right next to your project panel is just where you can edit the settings for any effect you drag over here. Um, so it's just editing those values, maybe keyframing values or animating anything from the effects and presets window or panel. The character and paragraph, which is going to be... This is actually helpful because what you can do, I can't find it right now because I did something with it, I don't know. Uh, is that going to go up to window? And I'm going to find it down here. So here's character. The check marks are the ones that you can see on screen, okay? So our audio is right here, you know, our info is up here, um, and so on and so forth. But I can go to character, and it'll show up right here. And this is just if you can type any sort of task or text. Let's, nope, let's do has effects. And um, what I'm going to do is the line panel actually too will align your uh, any layer honestly to your compositional window. So I can align it to the left or the middle or the right or the top or the bottom or just center it completely. But the character window, you can use any font, and you can just come in here, uh, change the color to any of your liking, and uh, you can adjust the leading, kerning, and tracking, and bold, and I got into a little bit, bit of that earlier. And uh, basically just to manipulate your text however you want, and that's super helpful, especially with motion graphics. And then the same thing with text is you can apply any sort of effect or preset to that text layer, which is super, super helpful when you're doing any kind of animation that involves text. Text can also be extruded into 3D space, um, either within the program through uh, Draft 3D. If you were to come down here and make it a 3D layer, you got your Draft 3D. And then you can, um, you can change the position in 3D space. There's Z, Y, X, the orientation. You know, it's flipping around that axis right there, which is super cool. Or with uh, Video Copilot's Element 3D plugin, you can actually extrude the text 
and turn it into really anything that you want it to be with bevel layers and uh, presets and uh, shaders and things like that. So after that, we've got the tracker window, which for me is down here. I'm going to go ahead and blow it up a little bit for you. And uh, what you can do, I'm going to change this to red because red is cool. So uh, what you can do is you can take your layer or any layer you want. I'm going to go ahead and drag that. Uh, some piece of footage in here just to show you into a new composition. So here's this layer and I want to maybe track the motion of this layer or stabilize the motion which is going to take the shakiness out of the footage and it's going to make it all smooth and perfect and well nearly perfect. You can also do a, a camera track which is just going to put little points on your screen where you can create null objects which uh, null is just an empty point in space with a 0, 0, 0 value that you can apply a um, position keyframe, rotation keyframe, scale keyframe. You can just use that null as kind of a parent to any um, asset you have in your timeline, which is where parenting and pick whipping comes in handy too. Um, your info panel up here, this is just where your cursor, cursor lies on screen. It's going to show your x and y coordinates and any color values, so you'll see it'll be green most of the time just because uh, you know it's it's green here got the preview window panel and this is just whenever you hit um, spacebar for me on the keyboard it's gonna play your timeline so far and this little green bar here is how much your timeline is rendered so you see it's not moving in regular space or regular time and you'll see that up here in your info panel it's gonna say uh, not real time because currently it's still rendering what's going on. So it's only moving around 23 frames per second instead of 29.97, which is what the footage was set at. Um, and finally, you've got your render queue. And that's if you'd like to render a timeline, you think it's done, you think it's good, and you can always go back. There's no problem with going back ever. But you can come up to Composition and click Add to Render Queue. And it's going to pop over here. And it's going to take the comp name, whatever you named it, and you got a bunch of settings down here. Uh, this I always have it set to best settings. You know the quality is best, resolution is full, and uh, disk cache is okay. But if I come down here to lossless, it's gonna be the output module. And what comes up here is the format of the uh, the timeline you want to export it as. So for me, it's pretty much always set to QuickTime. It's gonna render as a .mov file and um, that's just a video for me. You can also do PNG or Photoshop sequences. You can save it as an audio file, um, MP3 and WAV, which are really, WAV's higher quality, so it's really nice, but it's a lot more space. And that's what comes with QuickTime, is that um, most of the time, if you're rendering and you render out a QuickTime file, it's gonna render as a .mov, like I said, but that is a very, very high file size. And sometimes with the stuff I render, at least, it's going to be upwards of, you know, 10 gigabytes for a, for a quality render. So if you don't want a high file size, the um, video format you want to go to is MP4. And there is no MP4 setting here. There used to be, and I'm not sure why they took it out of After Effects. It's probably because they wanted to utilize Media Encoder, which is what I'm getting to now. If you go to Composition, add a Media Encoder queue, it's going to open up Adobe Media Encoder, and from there you can export as any video format, and that's where I do my exporting. I'll export from After Effects to Media Encoder, save it as a .mp4, put it wherever I need to put it, and from there I will have a lower file size. And you can always reduce, but we'll get into that uh, later. Um, other windows available that you don't see on my screen is if you go to window you'll see a line which is actually down here it's just not selected uh, brushes content aware fill essential graphics blah 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 all the ones that aren't checked right now and I'll tell you um, the only ones I have checked are really the only ones I ever utilize I'm not paying attention to mask interpolation or max on a VFX super comp or the metadata of the project or the smoother progress. I'm not paying attention to any of that because I don't need to. Um, the only one that I would say is maybe important is Lumetri scopes, which is just going to bring up the Lumetri scopes of your of your composition. And I don't use this in After Effects. You know, if I'm going to do any color grading, it's going to be inside Adobe Premiere. And that's where I'll look at the Lumetri scope, so it's not really anything I need to worry about in After Effects. But as of right now, that is a base layout of the program, 
and uh, in the next tutorial we'll get into how to actually create a project and um, how to create a solid save path so that you don't have any footage or assets that go missing or unlinked and then corrupt project files and it's just a whole mess so um, as for right now thank you for watching the first tutorial i hope it helped you and we'll see you with the next one on aetus with ryan bye